Right then, my number one game of all time is uh, <laughs> not necessary. Um, the Lord of the Rings, the card game from Fantasy Flight Games. Um, although really, it's weird to call it the card game. It feels like it should be called the Living Card Game. Um, As that's how they subtitle all of the rest of them. Uh, well, yeah, well, well, uh, and we will come on to all of the rest of them. That's an interesting comment, Ben. So, at the time of making this list, which it's it, not an interesting comment. Well, no, 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 no I was going to say, surely it should be the Lord of the Rings, the card game, LC Tree. No, that is a stupid title. But, that, but that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time of making this list, there, so, um, yeah. which was a good while ago now, so it's gone up a bit. No, Tom, it was yesterday. Yes, this is very funny. Um, <laughs> I have played this game 145 times, um, and we had, at the time of this list, 16 expansions for this game. Uh, I will teach how to play this very complex game in 60 seconds. Right, so in Lord of the Rings you have a party of three heroes from Middle-earth, uh, taken from four different spheres that are good at different things. Uh, with your heroes you will also have a deck of cards which reflect the allies, uh, the, uh, the attachments, like the gear and the weapons. Uh, and the events of Middle Earth, and you will be using your heroes to generate resources, to play these cards from your hand, to expand your board with allies and weapons, and then you will be questing, um, sending heroes on quests to get progress, to finish the quest before the Eye of Sauron comes upon you. Um, you'll be using these heroes to defend against the horrible enemies that will emerge uh, from the enemy deck, and you'll be using your heroes to attack those enemies and murder them. Uh, as well, in the enemy deck, uh, in the encounter deck, along with enemies that want to chop you up and kill you, there'll also be locations, which are these far-off places that are threatening and terrible until you meet them, and treacheries, which are just the worst thing ever, which are those horrible twists of fate. Uh, the original game just sort of focuses on the, the what-if, the side world of Lord of the Rings, and then as the game's gone on, it sort of explored the films and the books in a bit more detail. Oh, I went well over a minute there. Well, I, went, I say well over, like, 15 seconds. Um, so I'm going to read my stuff. It is a superb co-op. It's heavy. Uh, it's the only game that I play regularly solitaire. It is dripping in theme with an uber-high production. Uh, it doesn't suffer from other LCG problems, as it is a co-op. It tells a superb story. It has constantly different tactics to try. It can play up to four as well. And it can either be, which can either be, you can make the game quite easy and a relaxing jaunt through the Shire. Uh, although that's funny since the one scenario that features the Shire is horrifically difficult. Yeah. Um, or it can be brutally, brutally difficult. Heirs of Numenor, we're looking at... Ugh, ugh. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so if we if we unpack my amazing points, it's a superb co-op. Now you've hardly played this game. I I've, I've played it. I've played it a couple of times with you, like way way back. Yeah. Re like you know, I mean there, there were no expansions or anything, and we did like the first passage through. Well, no, and, and we did the second one. The well. banks, the Andwin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah or journey down the Andwin. Yeah, didn't yeah. do the third one. Uh, no. Speaking of punishingly difficult, mm -hmm. um, so Ben, but you and I have played this game. A lot together like there are numerous videos on the channel of us playing through scenarios even to the point of like themed decks yeah. um, so would Dwarves. you say would you say this is a superb co-op yes I, I would genuinely say this is uh, if not well in most people's eyes it probably wouldn't it probably wouldn't go be as high as something like Netrunner or Game of Thrones but I'd say that in a lot of people's eyes this is probably the best card game that FFG had made really because I think it's it hits all the right notes for a lot of the a lot of things that make it what it is if you know what I mean <laughs> like it's a Lord of the Rings game that feels like a Lord of the Rings game mm. it's also a cooperative game that feels incredibly cooperative mm. it's also a living card game that feels like the right way that a living card game should be made yeah uh, and that's obviously carried on into new games that they've made since then uh, like Arkham and stuff. Well, yes. Oh, the box shakes at that turn because <laughs> Arkham is Lord of the Rings 2.0, yeah. IMO. Um, now, uh, I said that the game is heavy, um, and as with as is the curse of all FFGs, LCGs, 
if you don't get in at an early enough point, the card pool becomes crippling in terms of management. And so, for instance, would you say, Alec, that that is one of the reasons that you have not played the game as much? Um, now, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, because I mean, when when I when I played it with you before, like you didn't have. Uh, no, you, didn't, no. you had maybe one expansion, maybe if uh, a couple of little boxes, not yeah, the, not the yeah, big yeah, ones. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was around the same time, or was just after that anyway, that Netrunner kind of began the thing. Yeah. For us and for me, the no, well, you know, Netrunner is versus. It's not cooperative, and 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 that's what. I liked in, in these kind of games because like mm-hmm. I build my deck to try to beat you yeah. who is build, who's building your deck. It's like so, you know I I'm not trying to build my deck to like support yours. Yeah. So I I don't think that the the format hurts you coming in at an early stage for Lord of the Rings mm. because of the very nature of you don't need to buy these extra packs, this expansion, this saga expansion, blah blah blah. blah. You could have a lot of fun even now just buying the, the core game and just playing that and because you're only going to play it with maybe one maybe two more other people in your gaming group it's not like they're going to be like oh have you not seen that card that does this yeah. it'll be like no because we ha- you play with this kind talking of about so. the weight of the game what is your least favorite thing about lord of the rings ben well the thing i don't really like about well, and I think it covers across multiple cooperative card games actually, because it's I feel the same thing in Arkham as well. I don't really like building decks for this. Um, Why? Because I think there's it's a little too, as you pointed out, heavy. There's a big pile of decisions, and there is a lot of things to decide. And because it's a cooperative game, if you make a deck that while you might think is fun, it might not in any way help the other person. Mm. Right, and so, for um, instance, do you not like making decks then in Game of Thrones or Netrunner? I enjoy making decks in Game of Thrones and Netrunner because I know that if it's going to hurt someone, it's only going to hurt me. Right. Whereas in Lord of the Rings, I'd be letting somebody out. I'd be letting my partner down by doing it. I don't mind... If it came to Lord of the Rings, making a deck when we've sat round and done it as a group, mm. so we're like me and you, or me and you and Jack, or whatever, have sat down to make a make like three parties or whatever. Yeah. I found that's not been too bad. That's interesting. But if someone said to me, "Oh, go away and make a Lord of the Rings deck, and then we'll play later," yeah. I'd be like, oh, "I don't really want to do that." Oh man, I didn't know that. See, I love sitting around in group thinking out decks. I think that's great. It's like making characters for a D and D. Like, I think that's more because fun. because I think if I if you sit down with the other person you're going to play the game with and you say to them at that point, I want to make a dwarf deck or I want to make a deck with all elves in it and I really don't want to play green or something, they can go, oh cool, well that's fine, maybe I'll play a bit of green. Here's how we can make your elf deck work with mine, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think- Whereas I genuinely think that if you took it, if you took the approach of trying to build it like you were building a versus deck by yourself. Kind of defeats the point of the game anyway, yeah. really, in a way. Yeah, but it, it, like... Exactly, because if, if both of you went away and, ma- and made the deck without any discussion, yeah. like, like you could both, yeah. you could yeah. both yeah. make very, very good um, questing yeah. decks yeah. that would just be yeah. eaten by enemies. And, yeah. and, and, and yeah, that, the that, other... as, as you say, that, that hurts yeah. not just you, but the other person playing the game. Because it's like, oh, well, why aren't you... Yeah, yeah. I think this is like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting, actually, when it comes to deck building for, with, for Lord of the Rings, is that you can approach it from another way again, in that you can approach it from the, the stance of, I'm going to make a deck that can not only do quest one, but two, three, right. four, five, six, ah. or... We're, we're doing Passage to work mode, Mirkwood. We play Make This Deck. We're doing Back to the Anduin. We do this one. Mm-hmm. We do uh, Dog but, Dur. We do this one. And I feel like this so. is one of the things, again, when you look at Arkham Horror as a 2.0, Arkham Horror has... It, one of the rules is what... Uh, an arbitrary you deck. No. You can't change your oh, deck. You can't change your deck. No. I thought you could put no, new cards in. Or no. You can, you, you, can, you can gain cards through experience, right. but you can't change the cards in your deck. Now, Lord of the Rings yeah. was never made with that in mind, but we, when we played, we imposed that arbitrary restriction. Mm. 
um, which I think makes it more fun. Um, but it does mean that certain quests presume you're going to build the deck to beat them. I'm yeah. looking at you, Journey from Roscoe And so if you don't do that, you are going to get punished. Mm. Um, well, it's like we've had times where we've played quests in the later expansions. I think it's in the card pack ones where you get Arwen. And in some quests, Arwen is ridiculously useful. And in some of them, she's ridiculously well, useless. <laughs> she's like, a card in the game yeah, yeah. as an ally, you so you play can't her. play her. Yeah. 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 Now, in terms of expansions, because uh, each of the little quest packs gives you a new quest, a new hero, two new cards for each sphere, and a quest. Which is a really cool way to expand the game compared to other LCGs where you're like, oh, I don't play Baratheon. These cards are oh, I, I, I hate yeah. NBN. Yeah. So these cards don't do anything for me. Um, and it means that your con the game itself is not just evolving from the new player cards that come out, as in Game of Thrones and Netrunner. Oh, mm -hmm. how interesting is a game of Netrunner going to be when I can play this? Mm -hmm. Or Game of Thrones. But you are still actually playing the same game. In Lord of the Rings, each new quest is a new game, which is yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so the th we, I've got the two... Um, like first bigger expansions, Kazadum, which is pretty good but ridiculously hard, and then Heirs of Numenor, which is just stupidly hard, like dumb hard. Yeah. Um, I, I, that that is that Heirs of Numenor are the kind of quests that you either have to tell your deck, like you could oh, effect, you, you, you could have you could effect, you play a, a quest of Heirs of Numenor. Look at your first five cards. Do the mulligan or whatever. Look at them and just say, "We might as well scoop." Oh, because it's it is just, so, it's, it's so hard. Yeah. It's punishingly unenjoyable. So I love odds. hard games, and I don't like Heirs of Numenor. Mm -hmm. um, and if this was the extent of Lord of the Rings, it would probably still be my number one game. Mm -hmm. But when you factor in what MFG did with the Saga expansions, yeah, these, are these are a different tier of game. These are as close, these make Lord of the Rings as close to a 10 on BGG that I would give because these take everything that's good about the game, the challenge, the co-op, the story, and they, they, they crystallise it. It is everything that is good about the game and they also have a sense of continuation yes is which is what thing, we so. arbitrarily as a house rule put yeah. in the game because you've got not only the cards that affect the enemy deck but also the cards that you can put yeah. into your oh man we've got a boon now we've got sting man yeah. when sting comes out the deck it's gonna be cool yeah. and as well this gets around one of my problems with lord of the rings which is that it's heavy because these were designed hey you could just buy the core box and buy this, and you would have a good... And we've seen that philosophy happening when it comes to Netrunner, because they've obviously adopted that when it comes to Terminal Directive. That's an entirely different style of game. But their philosophy was... you just Well, they've realised it goes too course. far. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a comic book. It's like a comic series yeah. re recessing. Yeah. And these are very much... If Arkham Horror is Lord of the Rings 2.0, these are Lord of the Rings 1.5. Mm -hmm. Because these introduced so much stuff that you see in Arkham, mm -hmm. which... Like, if they'd made Lord of the Rings, the card game, the second edition, mm. I, I think if that ever comes out, um, it would be it would completely kick the butt out of Arkham Horror for me. Because I love Arkham Horror, but mainly because mainly because it's it's the evolution of this game. Yeah. Like this is the first co op LCG that uh, FFG ever did, and I don't know many other co op F uh, the only one I can think of is a Pathfinder card game. Which has its problems, but it also yeah. has its bonuses in yeah. the way that it's been built. But. but FFG took all the things from that that worked, and they made just like such an amazing game with Arkham. Um, and were it not for the Saga expansions, Arkham would probably, would in my I opinion, be better than the One of the things that the Saga expansions really did as well is that it effectively gave people almost what they've been wanting for when they yeah. first picked up the game. To play because, the movies, play the books. Because yeah. people were picking up the game and thinking, where's Frodo, where's Sam? Yeah, those yeah. kind of things. And then the Saga expansions come out. I mean, I think they originally started doing... Did they they do did the Hobbit, Hobbit first, yeah. which is very much like... Yeah. That was their first attempt, first Pro try of it. Yeah. Yeah. Of it. And they went down really well. And I think that was one of the things that was... Uh, it was really good about it because it almost revitalised the game without them having to consider something like a new edition and stuff mm. like that. Oh, yeah. And, no, yeah. and I, yeah. I would say that Lord of the Rings, the card game, will probably go down as one of those games that 
probably didn't even if it if, if a second edition ever comes out for it, it'll be one of those games where people will be like, well, did it even really need it? Yes. Because I generally think that it's one that it's it's really hit like a, a good sort of note with a lot of people. It, it, as, as no, as no, it, it has a hundred percent, but because it's the first of its type, naturally there's a lot of learning. But yeah. it 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 was when I made this list, and it still is my number one game. And, it, and it's given me so many different forms of pleasure. Bizarrely, I have laughed more playing Lord of the Rings the card game than any other game, which in a game of like strict tactical decisions... Yeah. And in fact, the scenario that comes to mind about laughing the most is one of the hardest scenarios Eowyn. in the game. Yeah. Eowyn, man, <laughs> just like... So Aragorn will ride Eowyn yeah. out of dog with man. Man. <laughs> I tell you, like, yeah. we, have, we have had some laughs playing this game and if That's I flip the box this is before we started to box lead games really yeah. and this Those all of this stories, here yeah. these are the stories of my uh, and another friend going through and playing the scenarios and we've got like the score that we had one of the reasons I love the game it gives you a score even though the score system is it's not very good it's quite archaic man. yeah well, and we've got like we've written down like the events that occurred in the story and if uh, if I had the rule book to hand which I don't in it, it's it full second, of yeah. scores and like oh. the thing that I think also really uh, like I enjoy about Lord of the Rings, as a, when when you're playing it, is it has some of the moments that I think you get from potentially playing like role playing games where like you make like clutch decisions or something yeah. oh happens God. just in your favour and you get yeah. that natural twenty or whatever. Like for example, we played one of the ones from Casa Doom, which is when you're going down through the water. Thing, oh yes, and we yeah, thought yeah. we had lost all of our equipment. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. my dwarf deck suddenly found the helmet of um, uh, whatever Barlin. Barlin's oh, yeah, helmet, yeah, yeah. Barlin's axe, and it was like, yeah, yeah. oh my god, we're back on it now. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those games where you genuinely feel like there's like that like, really nice tempo building yeah. through it, and it. The other thing as well is it genuinely feels like a, a good struggle in terms of the Lord of the Rings ethos between it good feels, and evil. Yeah. Rather yeah. than Arkham, yeah. which is yeah. like, you are dying. Yeah. You are going to die. Yeah. If you survive, it will be by how much. Lord of the Rings has that, that like you say, like high fantasy. Also, sort of, of maybe all of the fantasy flight games, it has the best artwork. I would, would say? I would probably say, given there especially are very, given there are very few misses. <laughs> there are there, there are, are yeah. some misses. Yeah, yeah. but there are um, very few. I so. would say mm. as well when you were talking about like those clutch moments. This is something that Arkham, Netrunner, and Lord of the Rings have, and I think it's something that Game of Thrones really lacks, which is those flip moments. Because in Netrunner, it's when you run R and D, it's when you run HQ, it's when you run anywhere in this ice that's unrezzed, but when you access that card, your entire game can change on what you yeah. just touched um, or what just got flipped. Mm. And in um, Arkham, it's the bag. Mm. You know, it's like, what's going to come out the bag? Is it going to be a pass? Is it going to be a, a fail? And in this, it's the shadow cards on the enemy. Now, obviously, you get things like the cards coming off the deck, but that's a normal game. That shadow card is that tangible thing on there, and you, you calling that defence could change everything. And those moments of, oh my, oh my god, we did it! It's you know, the times like, where, you, where you have to make the hard decisions and you go, I'm going to have to let this go and defend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and you're like, because I need... And if it, doesn't, like, if it doesn't do yeah, plus one damage, like, we will survive. Because you're standing there thinking, yeah, yeah. I need Aragorn, yeah, yeah, for example, yeah. to attack this thing because he will kill it. He needs to let that wag hit him or something. And yeah. you're like, oh god. Oh, he's just live on one hit point or whatever. Yeah. And then it, goes from there. it just god. feels good when you play it. So Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, this is an interesting dis interesting discussion now when we usually end about would you play it? Because obviously for Carcassonne, that's like a no-brainer. Carcassonne hasn't been replaced for you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Arguably, like tomorrow, I'm playing Arkham Horror with Jack. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like he's not coming around to play Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, now, part of that is because there are new Arkham Horror scenarios. Will we ever go back and play through the Arkham Horror scenarios again? Will I play through them as many times as I've played through some of the frickin' scenarios in Lord of the Rings? Possibly not. Um, but I, if someone said to me, Tom, I really fancy playing through Lord of the Rings. I was thinking about the other day, it would be cool to make an Aragorn Boromir deck. Mm. I'd say, yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So I would um, play this game probably more so than Arkham I, I if would, it was the same scenarios. I would come back and play this game again if 
and it sounds really sounds really bad, but if you went out and bought another one of the expansions, I would Do you mean t- do you mean the second Fellowship of the Ring expansion, which I've had and you haven't played? I thought we, oh, did you play it with Jack or something? Or no, you? I played it by myself. Oh, You've never right, been to okay. Moria, have you? Oh no, because I thought I was thinking of Casa I know. But yeah. So like I would sit down, well, I need to play that then, I really. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, because yeah. I, I like that idea, of, I like going through the new ones that yeah. I've experienced before yeah. and stuff. Like, I, I I actually still find a little bit of glee going through Shadows um, from Mirkwood, what's it called? Passage through Mirkwood. Passage through Mirkwood and um, the Journey Adeline down one. the Anduin. Yeah, they're because amazing. Because even now, the first one is really easy but it can be quite dangerous <laughs> if you come up against some of the characters in it. And I then the second I I played. And then the second one can be oh, a so minefield, hard. but it's so fa- it's so fun going back through some of the older quests with both new heroes, new weapons, yeah. new armor mm. and things. And, like and, and, and that's the life of the game. Like every new hero is like every quest now is suddenly more interesting. And because it's such a recognizable property, a lot of people get the thrill of what if we did an alternative fellowship and stuff like yeah. that. It's like, yeah, what yeah. if what, what if, if Gandalf and Elrond? What if, Ga- were, what if Gandalf yeah. was always there at the beginning? He yeah. never left Ho- yeah. Frodo or Hobbiton, and he carried on because obviously Gandalf's a new card now. He's the hero that you play as. I mean, not now. It was a long time ago by this point. But yeah. you know what I mean, like, what about you, Alec? Would you ever have any interest in playing the game? Um, I would, but it's another LCG that I would have to learn, and there's only so much like hand holding that I would want for it so, so, so yeah you're very different to Ben in yeah. terms of playing a co-op yeah you would want to feel the agency of your own decisions yes yeah, yeah. exactly like uh, yeah I mean yes I could play like one or two games where you built the deck for me and, and like you're trying and you know and the decks throw me things but after that I would need to go away learn all the cards yeah and work out and, and yeah you're not a toe thing. dipper no do you know what I mean no, yeah. you want to that, but, yeah that, that, that's the thing and, and because there is so much in the game. Mm. I think I, I'd almost have to play through it from start. So oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, so, so right, yeah. The first three, the first three scenarios, we can only only use the call box for. And then when you bring new stuff in, we can only use what had been released at that time. Oh, right. Just because because that's how the game has evolved, and like that's how you'll yeah. that's, yeah. Essentially, yeah. that's, that's essentially how you're going to learn the mechanics. There are a lot of really me. fun cards, though. That's the true, thing, but okay, but, okay. but so but, here's here's the question then: Would you rather play Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. presuming that really you're almost coming at it from a new new have player you played, point have of you view? Played Arkham, by the or way. would you rather play Arkham? I well, would I, you like I, to I haven't that? played Arkham. But this is yeah. which appeals well, more to you? You know what I mean. Yeah, well, but the how much is theme drawing out like it. Alex not really one for oh, I mean, dude, I freaking love Vikings may- and dwarves. Maybe, maybe um, Arkham purely because I've heard. Obviously, you know, I know how much it's you love this game, and, and I, yeah. I, I, you've called it you know two point oh of this. Fair enough, but the co-op side of this has turned me off Arkham. Oh, you know what Arkham's co-op. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. Arkham is cop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But the, yeah, the, the nature of how cooperative. Yeah, it of, is. of of the, the nature of of a cop game, which this was, mm. and and I was like, yeah. It's oh, okay. I yeah. see. Yeah. I understand what like, you mean. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, 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 if if it's an LCG, I'd much rather it be me making my making my deck trying to beat you. Yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Also, before you turn the video off, <laughs> these sexy tokens from Team Covenant. Do not come in Lord of the Rings. No, so don't be don't be weirded out when you don't get wood in your box. <laughs> Tone lowered. <laughs>